Dengue fever. If you were unfortunately in the regions of Africa, Asia, and South America, you would be amongst the unlucky people who would have been infected by the bite of an Aedes mosquito. Aside from the swollen red bite marks that would appear at the contact site, this parasite basically likes to drink the blood of its culprit. The first telltale symptom would be a headache so intense that you'll feel like someone is driving a drill into your skull. It will be accompanied by muscle aches, fever, and a sore throat so severe you'd think you've been swollen swallowing sandpaper. As the virus progresses through your bloodstream, spreading chaos, it would attack your lymph nodes and white blood cells before eventually getting to your liver, bone marrow, and spleen. At this point, you've already got a condition known as virema, which basically means there is an insane amount of dengue virus in your bloodstream. The worst is yet to come. Now, red rashes would appear all over your skin. You might experience the rare but fatal dengue hemorrhagic fever, which is marked by by difficulty breathing, bruising of your organs, and bleeding from your nose and gums. Basically, any opening in your body would spill blood. Sadly, there are no treatments for dengue fever, and the only thing you can do is take medications to relieve your pain and manage the symptoms. Cancroid. Cancroid is basically one of the reasons why practicing safe should be among your first five priorities. Because if you were to unfortunately fall victim to this infection after participating in unprotected with an infected person, you'd first notice an innocent-looking painless bump on your genitals. However, within 24 hours, that small bump would transform into a pus-filled ulcer that looks like an infected Swiss cheese. The base of the ulcer would be covered with a gray or yellowish-gray material that can easily bleed if bumped or scraped. Now, the infection would lead to a very painful urination that would literally feel like you're peeing liquid fire. And as the infection spreads, the lymph nodes nodes in your groin would swell and turn a very painful reddish color filled with oozing, disgusting pus. Now, the scariest part is that the infected pus can also be transmitted to someone else through physical contact. Talk about a viral Bluetooth connection. If left untreated, cancroid may lead to you getting HIV because you're more likely to contract the virus. However, the good news is that if detected early, cancroid can be completely treated and cured with a wide range range of antibiotics. Because honestly, the only thing you want burning is your passion, and not your genitals. Melioidosis. Let's say you're a contractor for hinge construction companies, and this time you have just returned from a job in Thailand. However, a few weeks later, you start to run a high fever that's followed by intense chest pain, shortness of breath, and loss of appetite. You head to the hospital, and after what seems like a marathon of tests, your results show that you have melioidosis, a fatal disease that attacks the lungs, skin, and blood all at once. The disease is caused by certain bacteria that live in the soil and water bodies of places like Thailand, Singapore, and Malaysia. It can get into your body through an open opening in your skin, like a bruise, or by mistakenly ingesting it through contaminated food or water. Now, the unique thing about this bacteria is its patience. It can hang out in your body longer than that weird smell in your fridge, popping up months or even years later, like that ex who just won't take the hint. And then, all of a sudden, it'll throw a massive rage and begin to smash up your insides like a mini hulk with a vendetta against your organs. Soon, you'll be coughing up blood, unable to walk or lift things due to excruciating muscle and joint pain. This would be promptly followed by sores appearing all over your body, stomach, and chest pain, fatigue, seizures, and weight loss. Every year, about 165,000 cases of melioidosis are reported, and out of this number, 89 thousand deaths are recorded. Diphtheria. So, you went to see a baseball game, but the lady sitting next to you just kept sneezing and coughing everywhere, and unfortunately, you did not have a face mask to protect yourself. Three days later, you'll wake up feeling like you swallowed a bacteria-filled lab test sample. Your neck is as swollen as a bullfrog in mating season, so you can't breathe properly. Your voice sounds so dry and hoarse, like someone is gargling gravel and sand, and your whole body aches like you've 
have been used as a punching bag for one week straight. Unknown to you, you have been infected with diphtheria, a serious bacterial infection that mostly affects the mucous membranes of the nose and throat, which is currently responsible for your plus-sized throat. Now, the bacteria can enter your body through your throat from inhalation or through your skin when you handle the personal items of an infected person. But sadly, if the bacteria enters your body through the throat, well, you should probably start looking at funeral arrangements. The bacteria leads to fever, chills, extreme tiredness, and a running nose, and if left untreated for whatever stupid reason, it progresses to the heart muscles. Once it gets there, it can cause a condition called myocarditis, which is an inflammation of the heart that can lead to heart failure and sudden death. To be honest, doesn't sound so fun. Rubella. While this sounds like the name of an exotic dancer from Hawaii, rubella is actually a viral disease also known as German measles. This particular virus has different symptoms for different people, so adults, children, and babies would react differently to the disease. Rubella is generally airborne, so if you come into contact with the cough or sneeze of an infected person, the first symptom you'll notice is the signature red rash that'll appear all over your body, leaving you looking like a red lobster fresh out of a seafood boil. Now, as the disease progresses, you'll also start to feel very sore and achy, like you've just done a full body workout with a professional wrestler. And to top it all, you will develop a serious case of pink eye, making you look like you've been crying overnight. However, the real horror of this disease is what it does to an unborn baby in the belly of their mothers. Sometimes the pregnant woman may experience a miscarriage or even give birth to a baby with severe birth defects like blindness or deafness. It's like the virus has a particularly cruel sense of humor targeting the most vulnerable. There's also a high risk of brain and chronic liver damage. The bad news is that this disease has no cure, but the symptoms can still be managed with proper medication. Norovirus. If you're a lazy person and don't wash your fruits and vegetables before consumption, there is a huge chance that you might get infected with a deadly disease like the norovirus. You see, this this virus is the number one cause of foodborne illness in both children and adults in the United States, resulting in about 21 million cases per year, and out of this number, about 900 deaths are recorded. The reason for this high death rate is that norovirus is a very stubborn germ that can survive on surfaces for a very long time. The worst part is that the virus is highly contagious and can spread faster than gossip in a small town. Now, if you were unfortunately a victim of this virus, it would head straight to your stomach lining and intestines and cause them to swell up like someone tried smuggling water balloons in there. Within 12 to 48 hours of infection, you'd essentially start vomiting and pooping out every content in your belly. The diarrhea, nausea, and stomach pain will keep you sprinting to the bathroom faster than Usain Bolt with a rocket strapped to his back. This would also be accompanied by brain-splitting headaches, fever, and severe body pain. However, the virus typically packs up and leaves on its own after a while, but during the period of infection, there is no treatment or medication that will help you feel better. You just have to ride it out and hope that it leaves soon. The only thing you can do is stay hydrated, get some rest, and maybe invest in some heavy-duty toilet paper while your body fights the virus. Shigalosis. From a very tender age, you were taught to always wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water after using the toilet. Well, this rule was probably drilled into you so that you don't get infected with diseases like shigalosis, which is quite literally transmitted from touching the poop of an infected person. However, if you get infected, the bacteria will make a beeline straight to your digestive system. This would cause stomach pain so intense that it'll feel like your intestines and stomach contents decided to throw a rave without your consent. The crippling tummy ache would also be accompanied by bloody and explosive diarrhea that would make you deep clean your toilet afterward. Now, you might also experience fever and vomiting, but these symptoms would most likely leave if you take medications and stay hydrated. However, if you had a weak immune system before your infection, then you'd be at risk of developing serious complications like like bloodstream infections, seizures, kidney failure, or arthritis. It's like the bacteria decided to throw an after party that nobody wanted. So if you don't want your insides to be a breeding ground for bacteria and infections, wash your hands thoroughly after using the toilet. Enterovirus D68. While this definitely sounds like the name of a futuristic electric car, don't be fooled. The truth is that it is actually a sneaky little virus that infiltrates your respiratory system and causes a 
full-blown war. The virus first made headlines in 1962, but unlike the regular cold, this guy came with a lot more drama than a soap opera marathon, and its target audience was kids. The virus was spread through respiratory secretions like saliva, nasal mucus, or sputum, so if someone near you sneezes or coughs without covering their mouth, it's like they're sending out a tiny viral party invitation. The next thing you'd experience is a dry, unending cough that would feel like you've swallowed a truckload of sawdust. Plus, your nose would basically turn into a leaky faucet that just won't quit. You reach for tissue after tissue, but the drip, drip, drip continues. Eventually, the coughing would turn into painful wheezing, and it would feel like you're trying to breathe through a straw with an elephant sitting on your chest. It's the respiratory equivalent of trying to squeeze into your old high school jeans. Uncomfortable and very painful. This dreadful condition can cause severe chest pain and breathing difficulty, especially in kids with asthma and a history of heart problems. However, this condition is not a death sentence, so with proper medication and sufficient rest, you should be good as new within a couple of weeks. Hib disease. It was a Sunday afternoon, so you decided to head to the park with your two-year-old daughter. After about three hours of running around like a caffeinated squirrel in excitement and having the time of her life, you both start to head home. However, she looks a bit tired and pale as you tuck her into bed, but you just chalk it up to too much excitement from the day's activities. The next day, you notice that her neck is very stiff and her body temperature is so hot you could fry an egg on it. To make matters worse, your child is breathing like she's trying to impersonate Darth Vader, and her throat looks swollen enough to smuggle watermelon. Upon getting to the hospital, she is diagnosed with Hibs, a deadly bacteria that can cause some very serious infections, especially in kids under the age of five. You see, Hib bacteria cause infections by invading the bloodstream and spreading to the different parts of your body. If not detected and treated in time, this disease may result in conditions such as meningitis, pneumonia, epiglottitis, and septic arthritis. Unfortunately, the microscopic menace is airborne and can be spread through an infected person's saliva or cough droplets. It's like playing a game of hot potato with germs, and you definitely don't want to catch it. If you had not come to the hospital when you did, the virus would have escalated to septic arthritis, which would cause serious joint and tissue damage to your body. Your joints would basically puff up like balloons, making them extremely stiff, tender, and red, like someone swapped out your limbs with overinflated party decorations. Hib virus can be combated with serious antibiotics, but the best way to stay safe is to get vaccinated. Respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. Basically, every family has that one annoying relative who shows up uninvited every winter only to cause chaos, especially among the children and elders. This is exactly what the respiratory syncytial virus does. It is like the Grinch of the respiratory world, making its grand entrance every winter and spreading through the droplets of an infected person. This viral disease is also a master of disguise and would start off pretending to be just a common cold. You would first experience mild symptoms that involve decreased appetite and a runny nose that would be accompanied by constant sneezing and coughing. It'll feel like someone force-fed you a cocktail of hot chili peppers and sawdust, then challenged you to recite the alphabet. You would also experience a low-grade fever, just enough to make you feel like a human furnace, but not quite hot enough to fry an egg on your forehead. However, if a child or an elderly person with a weakened immune system were to get infected, the story would be way worse. The coughing, wheezing, sneezing, and fever would be multiplied by 100 and would lead to severe conditions like pneumonia and inflammation of the small airway in the lungs, and the victim could even develop asthma. At this point, the victims would need an emergency medical response to help remove mucus from their airways, IV fluids for hydration, and a ventilator to help them breathe. About 64 million people are infected with RSV every year, and out of this number, over an estimated 160,000 deaths are recorded. That's more people than the population of Iceland! It's like the disease is trying to create its own country of miserable, sniffling citizens. There are still a ton of deadly contagious diseases in the world, and the best way to stay informed and updated about them is to join our Discord server. Monkeypox. Despite its name, monkeypox isn't about primates suddenly taking over the planet. This viral disease is more like the exotic cousin of chickenpox, which isn't as deadly but would still cause some serious problems for you if left untreated. The virus is found in rodents and monkeys, and enters your bloodstream if you get bitten by one or eat the meat from the infected animal. In
In most cases, it is always transferred if you come into physical contact with an infected person. Now, as soon as it enters your bloodstream, this little bugger will make itself very comfortable within the first two weeks and then BAM! You'll feel like you've been hit with the worst post-party hangover. The first symptoms you'll notice are fever, headache, backache, and muscle aches, which would make you feel like you've literally been lifting bags of cement for a month straight. Your lymph nodes would swell so much and you'd be very, very cold, like someone cranked up the AC in your body to Arctic. Even standing up from bed to pee would feel as stressful and tiring as hiking Mount Everest. The next stage of infection is the rash that starts on your face and then quickly spreads to other parts of your body, including your palms and the soles of your feet. These rashes would progress and turn into painful, pus-filled blisters that would leave you looking like a disgusting, leaking human bubble wrap. When infected, there is no treatment to cure monkeypox, but supportive care like rest, drinking plenty of water, pain relief, and antiviral medication can be used to manage your fever and discomfort. But as the popular saying goes, prevention is always better than cure, so maybe Maybe you should just get vaccinated. Encephalitis. After years of doing stand-up comedy, you'll finally get to be in front of a huge audience, and your nerves are all over the place. However, little do you know that your brain has an entirely different stand-up routine planned. You suddenly have a fever that's even hotter than your spiciest joke, and a headache that makes you wonder if you accidentally headbutted a brick wall during rehearsals. You try to ignore all this and still go on stage, but the worst happens because you can't seem to remember any funny jokes or punchlines. It's like your brain just decided to press pause and everything is spinning like you're stuck on a broken merry-go-round. You faint and wake up in the hospital where the doctor confirms that the cause of your sudden illness is encephalitis. This basically happens when your brain gets inflamed by viruses like herpes and bacteria infections. The infection would cause your brain matter to literally swell up and press against the neurons that transmit information, turning your stand-up routine into a jumbled mess. You would experience experience intense shakes and shivers like something that stayed out in the cold all night. You would even begin to hallucinate and see things that are not there, making you feel like you're in the middle of a surreal comedy sketch that's gone off the rails. Treatments usually involve kicking the brain inflammation out with antiviral, antibacterial, or antifungal medications. Steroids can also be administered to reduce the inflammation and calm things down.